What's up guys, it's Rogue Tier here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. This is the first video of 2022, so I hope you guys do leave, do leave a comment, like the video and subscribe for this occasion. It is really, really important. I hear that if you hit your subscribe button really, really fast, it will actually catch fire. So you guys should try that out for yourselves. For today, I got, as you can see from the title, I got an Arm Dragon deck for you guys. I know that these haven't been the most competitive decks I am showing you, but I promise guys those are on the way. I am just currently building them. I'm showing you guys what I currently have at the moment. So hope you guys do enjoy my Arm Dragon Thunder deck. And without any further ado, let's get straight into the deck profile. So starting off with this deck profile here, we are starting with the heart and soul of the Arm Dragon Thunders. We have the level three. He is the most important one because he's the one that gets everything started in a way. And they all have this effect, so I'm gonna quickly just read it now. When this card is on the field, you can send it to the grave along with one card in your hand and it basically levels them up. It's their own sort of level mechanic. And they all have an inherent effect to get you that plus back. Because if you have this card, obviously you discard one, you've gone minus one. They all have an effect to, you know, get you back that, that uh, neg. So it's kind of nice because it keeps your hand size sort of of a decent size and hand size with this deck is absolutely everything. So Arm Dragon Thunder, apart from specialing out the level five from the deck, when he is, you know, sent to the grave by his effect, you can draw one card. So he's really, really nice because potentially draw into hand traps or potentially just more Arm Dragons that you need to discard. For another three up here, we have triple of the Arm Dragon Thunder, level five. Again, same effect as number three. But when he goes to the grave, adds you a Wind Dragon monster. So this is really useful because not only does it add your Arm Dragon Thunder monsters, it can help grab your Tempest, which that card in this deck is crazy. Or you can even add a Hand Trap, guys, that I will be showing you later. The Hand Trap that you can search up. But this guy is a, can search you Hand Traps, isn't that crazy? So for the next one here, we have Arm Dragon Thunder level 7. Again, three of each because you sort of go through them really, really quickly. And he has the same effect to special out the big level 10 guy from the deck. But also when he's sent to the grave, he adds you any Arm Dragon card from your deck to hand. So he is the rotor and the Arm Dragon cards, I play the ones that basically get you hand size back. So you're never really down on hand size. Hand size is kind of essential to this deck. It's like live or die by your hand size. For the level 10s, we have two Arm Dragon level 10 whites. He was a really, really cool addition that Konami decided to make. So how this works, is he has to special summon himself by banishing levels equal to 10. So that can be a seven and a three, two fives or one 10. But basically he specials himself out and he's really neat because in the battle phase he can pop cards and he also adds you the white veil. I'm not playing the white veil, which is a spell card because I don't actually think it's that good. And it's sort of a brick. You don't really want to be seeing it that much in your hand. So I just decided to cut it all together for a more useful card. And also if you are going to get a burn deck, well, you can't lose anymore because you take no effect damage while he's on the field. For the other level 10s, I'm playing the OG, Arm Dragon level 10. Uh, yeah, he was really difficult to bring out before, but now it's actually really easy. You just need a level seven. And if you don't know what he does, you can send one card from your hand to the grave and it destroys all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So it's kind of useful with 3,000 attack. They both have 3,000 attack, that's 6K, and then you can rank them up into level 10 and do the extra 2K. That is why this is a going second deck, in my opinion is actually really good for the OTKs. And then we have his new retrain, Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. He has a bunch of effects that I'm not gonna be going into, but essentially he's also really, really nice. You only play one of each because we wanna keep the level 10s down because we're already playing four of them and you don't really wanna like, you know, turn this deck into like a brick first. So that is why I'm playing these ratios. You can of course experiment. I've seen people play two of him, but I just wanna stick to the one. He's a complete brick in your hand. You want him in the deck. So that is it for the Arm Dragon monster part. Now we're gonna move on to like the supplementary uh, monster here. It's Triple Artillery Catapult Turtle. He's sort of like a Lone Flyer boss. And if you don't know what he does, you basically normal summon him and you tribute himself and you special summon a level five straight from the deck, ignoring the summoning condition. So basically it just skips the whole level three process and is really useful that way. Helps, can also help you get like two level fives on board and go for Xyz plays, it's just a really neat card. It was between him or win the win channel, I just think he is a lot better. For our other uh, dragons that we are playing, we are playing one Tempest, as I mentioned before, he is a wind dragon searchable, and he is really, really good because what he can do is he can search you other dragons from your deck to hand, and we are playing hand traps, guys, that are dragons. So that means we can search all the hand traps apart from one that we are playing, and also he's really good because he comes back. He's really good at recursion. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there are a lot of level sevens in this deck. He's a level seven. 
unlocks basically your level seven, you know, XC's pool. So that is why we are playing him, he's essential in this deck. Well, since this is going second deck, we are playing one Pankatop. Again, he is level seven, but we don't really use him as XC's material because he just special summons himself to the board and pops a card, usually back row, to assure that your arm dragon effects do go through. For the hand traps, just get the generic one out of the way. We're playing Triple, Ash Blossom, and Joy Spring. I feel like this card just hits every single deck and there's no reason not to play it in a deck like this where you sort of need to go second and you know stun your opponent enough that you can kill them. I feel like Ash Blossom is really, really nice. So for the searchable hand traps, guys, we do have a uh, double of the Fantastical Dragon Phantasmae. This is searchable through Tempest. And then we actually have, guys, Heavenly Zephyr Miradora. So I bet you guys haven't seen this card in a while. This card was hyped to be an incredible hand trap. It's actually not that good in most decks, but this deck can actually search it, meaning that this is a crazy card. If you don't know what Phantasmia does, basically, if you are gonna go second, he can sort of fix your hands. And what is really, really important about Phantasmia, guys, he protects you from effect veiler and impermanence. So what does that mean? It means that your armed dragon monsters are safe and can resolve. It's, even though, you know, they send themselves to the grave, if they're hit by a, an impermanent effect veiler, they will resolve without effect. So that is why we have the Phantasmia. And the Heavenly Zephyr Miradora, guys, if you didn't know, he, his effect and activation can't actually be responded to. If your opponent summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack from the extra deck, he specials himself out, so another body, and they're both level 7, if you haven't realized, for more more XC plays. And basically, he targets face a monster, opponent's monster with special summon from the extra deck, and basically just blankets it as long as it's on the field. So it's actually a really cool card, and it helps go with the, you know, Wind Dragon and level 7 uh, theme that I have going in the deck. So I feel like these two hand traps, they may not be the best, but they are searchable, and they are really, really cool in this deck. Moving on to the spell cards here, we are playing Triple Pot of Extravagance. As I mentioned before, you live and die by hand size in this deck. You really, really do need those plus ones when you can get them, and Pot of Extravagance does exactly that. And your extra deck isn't really that important either, so you can OTK very, very easily without even touching your extra deck. For the other spells, we are playing Triple of the Armed Dragon Flash. This is sort of like the E-Telly for the deck. Only does a level 3, I don't know why they did that, they should have done level 5 or lower. But I guess in a way they didn't want them to be too crazy, but then again, even if it was level 5 or lower, I don't think the deck would be too crazy anyway. But it is a quick play, so you can do it during your opponent's turn as well, as sort of a defensive play if you do draw more than one. And yeah, it's just a really neat card. For the other Arm Dragon spells we are playing, we're playing double Arm Dragon Lightning and double armed dragon blitz so i am playing two of each because yes these cards are really good they're searchable guys you can search them with level seven so there's no reason to be playing three of them especially if they are hard ones for turns like these cards are so if you don't know these cards basically just get you your plus one back so arm dragon lightning allows you to add an arm dragon monster with an equal or lower attack from your graveyard to your hand by targeting one on the field or it also has a second effect, which it gains attack equal to its level, helps push with OTKs as well. So really useful card, Lightning. Usually use it for the recursion back to your hand for more plays later on, and yeah, just really useful. And Arm Dragon Blitz, if you don't know, it basically just specials a monster with the same level and name, so you can get two level fives on board, two level sevens on board, ignores their summoning canoe. They can't attack directly, but it doesn't matter because you're gonna be using them as uh, XC's material at that point. For the other spells I'm playing, I'm playing one Raigeki. This is an OTK deck, and Regeki does exactly that. Gets rid of all the monsters your opponent controls, just and basically forces the negate, which is what you sort of want to do before you commit your armed dragons, just force the negate so that they can go through very safely. One Monster Reborn, again, helps with XC's plays. Sort of really useful in an OTK deck. One Call by the Grave to play through hand traps. One Harpy's Feather Duster to deal with back row, and one Red Reboot again to deal with those back row decks. So that is it for the main deck, guys. It is, of course, 40 cards. And we're gonna be now moving on to the brief extra deck that I have made for you. So moving on to the extra deck, it's not a full extra deck, it's just some ideas that I've thrown around for you guys. I, of course, have the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. I have, you know, his brother number 81. These are really good because you do play a lot of level 10s. And if you didn't know, a Armed Dragon level 10 with the Armed Dragon level 10 white is 6k damage overlay into your Gustav Max. And this guy does 2k burn. So that is exactly game. I put the number 81 in in case, you know, you need, you can't really OTK, you can make him 4k defense and can make himself unaffected by everything so sort of good to sit on you of course can play the lieb as well 
he's also really really good for OTKs. For the rank 7s I just threw in a big eye and I also threw in the darkest dragon Doom Rider. So big eye, we all know what big eye does, he's basically just a snatch deal, takes control of the monster, can't attack the turn, the effect's activated but doesn't matter because you're going to be hopefully pushing for game at that point. And this guy is sort of like a Dryden. He takes two level seven monsters, but if you do make him with dragons, he is a quick effect. If you don't know what this guy does, he can target one card, one face up card on the field and destroy it. And if you destroy a monster, he can make a face up monster you control gain the attack. So you can make your arm dragon thunders really, really high in attack and maybe potentially hit the 10,000 attack for its super you know, ability that will activate at 10,000 attack. And also for the rank fives, can play whatever you want. You can play uh, the artifact one. I'm playing the Volcasaurus. Why? Because this does pops a card and does burn damage and helps you push for the OTKs. Can't attack directly, but it still can attack the monsters. So that is the end of the deck profile, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a comment down below what decks you do want to see next. I've seen actually sharks are quite uh, popular in the comments. If I see more people comment for sharks that they want to see a shark deck profile, I will make it for you guys. I would have to get all the bits, but it's something I am willing to do for you guys. So with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the deck profile. Please don't forget to subscribe. We're very, very close to 600 subscribers and I'll see you in the next video. It's time to... Let's go.